Hello, people of Grace. For our Pastoral Connect today, I just want to take a couple minutes to give a bit of a preview for this Sunday's sermon and talk about faith in the present tense, faith that shows up in how we interact with people, with life, in a very real, embodied, kind of trusting way in the present tense, regardless of the situation. And that's uh, that challenge for us to demonstrate that kind of faith in the present tense, I'm really basing on Hebrews chapter 5 and 6, and especially landing in verses in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. But in context, going back really even to the tail end of chapter 5, the author is challenging us to process suffering well, uh, to process pain and the frustrations and the downers of life well, like Jesus did. That is the sign of a mature faith. Not doctrine, as important as that is, the beginning of chapter 6, but processing suffering well, so that we all get to a place where we are teachers, where we are leaders, where we're really showing up in space, in life, in the present, in a way that communicates faith and confidence and courage that really inspires other people. Uh, to get there, there's really two things that the author really challenges us to process and internalize uh, that are related to faith in the present tense. Uh, first, there's a cognitive element. There's an intellectual element that God said something to Abraham and backed up what he said by saying something else by invoking an oath. So God gives kind of a two-step verbal confirmation that is informational, it's cognitive, and we hear that information and have to ask ourselves, would God lie? Can God lie? And if he can lie or he would lie, then we're doomed anyway, because if the ground of all being is not trustworthy, then there is no ground on which to stand. So there's a cognitive intellectual element to believing the word of God, that spoken word of God extra confirmed by an oath, but there's a deeper level, and that is to really understand the heart of God that would drive him to make that cognitive, intellectual, verbal commitment in the first place. And what Hebrews 6 tells us is that God had a heart. He had our second C. First one is cognitive. Second one is God had a compassionate heart to bless Abraham's offspring. God has a heart to bless his children. He is so incredibly, compassionately, uh, unalteringly for us. And isn't that what Jesus shows us? For God so loved the world that he gave his son. So when we really understand the cognitive part, the content of God's word and his promise, and the second C, the compassion the heart behind that promise, and we're actually processing that well, then the author says in Hebrews 6, 19 through 20, we have this, this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul that enters into really the inner place, the very presence of God, the Holy of Holies in heaven, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, that there is a hope that shows up in our soul, in our innermost being, in our bodies, that's sure and steadfast, that's positive, that's hopeful. In other words, it's courageous. And that courage, that calmness in the face of crisis, of um, trauma, of challenge, of trial, of loss, that sense of I am anchored, that's the turning point. That's where we grow up to really be teachers the slash leaders that really manifest faith in the present tense, regardless of the circumstances, and become a source of encouragement to others. And being a source of encouragement to others, being a courageous soul, is, in God's own beautiful way, incredibly encouraging. So... Capture God's heart, be blessed. His heart is for you and have an anchored soul.